Who's ready for story time? Gentlemen, to the basement, a.k.a. our new evil lair. Hello again. In this video, I'm going to look over some things I covered three years ago, a little more. Of some particularly poor in-fed half-wave antenna transformers that repeatedly get recommended by the Facebook experts in the groups. And then also let's look at one more that's also terrible, uh, commonly used for low power and portable operations, and then examine some viable alternatives. I'm also going to make this video in a different style than I have in the past. I like to have a good time, so that's what I'm going to do here. And some people might not like it, and that's fine. My channel's not monetized, so it does not matter to me at all how many views I get. So a few years ago, when I became interested in construction of infant half-wave antennas, I ran across the Facebook groups where the experts... We're always touting the stack of three ferrite 52 mix toroids, part number 59520038081. I tend to use the ferrite numbers, not the Amadon numbers, because Amadon doesn't make anything, they buy from ferrite. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're irrelevant. Anyhow, the experts said that a stack of three of these is the, the greatest transformer there is. There's a spreadsheet that floats around even to this day saying that it's 98.6 to 92% efficient. And that it's a recommended configuration. But then I ran across Owen Duffy's blog, and... He looked at this, and he didn't like it. He talked about how the loss would go up at the high end of HF. And then I saw where Danny Horvat built two of them, put them back to back, and showed the loss through them. And it didn't look good on the top end. So I thought, well, we've got some people saying this is the greatest thing. We've got some people saying it's junk. Somebody's not being honest here. And I guess the only way I'm going to find out is to test this myself. So I built two of them, tested them through a VNA. Here's a graph. Actually, two graphs. Uh, the blue line is building it the way the Facebook experts say that it needs to be built, with the two wires twisted together to make the primary and winding it and crossing it over the toroid and winding more and using their eBay no-name 15,000-volt capacitor. Uh, the red line is me trying to improve it by winding it as tight as possible and just tapping it after the second turn. Uh, the way I saw Owen, every time he winds a transformer that I see on his blog, that's the way it is. And it did improve it a lot, but still, you can see it at the top end of HF here. We're looking at, it's only 50% efficient. It's nowhere near what's claimed. Come on, you know it sucks! And then in one of the Facebook groups, the expert who runs it, uh, he'll delete any posts that, you know, say that, it's not the best transformer, it's not a good transformer, that some other transformer is better. Uh, he'll delete those posts, he'll ban people. And then finally, at least a couple years ago, he just completely shut off the ability uh, to create any new threads there. Um, evidently, it um, when you say that his transformer is not the best, it affects him something like this. Emotional damage! Anyhow, moving on. Um, video that 
maybe gained a little more traction was this one about um, two pieces of ferrite that are very, very similar in mass, but have quite different geometry, and the amount of loss is quite different. Um, I don't know who Luis is. Whoever you are, Luis, thanks for asking Owen Duffy to look at it. Um, Owen liked it. I mean the one on the right. Um, and Colin, who is so much better at making YouTube videos than I am, um, has made some videos detailing this as well. And Danny Horvat now sells transformers that uh, use this particular piece of ferrite. Yeah, I really wanted people to make their own, but some people just won't do that. So if they're going to buy, I'd rather them buy something that works good. And, you know, through the years, every single thing that I've seen Danny publish uh, loss measurements for, if it was something that was detailed, what all the parts were in it to where I could build the same thing, his his results are, are legitimate. I, I duplicated them. He's not fudging this stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would trust him. But uh, anyway, let's real quickly um, look at the loss numbers on these two compared. There's absolutely no contest between the two of them. But you wouldn't know that if you were listening to that expert that moderates the other Facebook group and by allowing him to do so he's completely ruined it. You know which guy I mean, right? Learn this little cowboy. Wears a Stetson hat, it's got a black mustache. Comes from the dusty plains and the open valleys up there in Connecticut. And that guy's gotten on there and he's made his snarky remarks to multiple people. I don't know, lately it seems to be Colin, you know, when he publishes his videos. This dude's got to make his comments of, Well, I don't see how it's any better than an FT24043. Buddy, if you can't see that it's any better, you're either not looking are not capable of interpreting some very simple data or you're just a liar. And, you know, we just really don't need you continuing to mislead people which causes them to use crappy hardware. Shame. 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 Shame, shame, shame. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Shame on Q. This was serious, but it turned into something fun. Anyway, uh, don't throw out that 59430038031. Because if you stack up two of them, as you can see here, it makes a pretty decent transformer. Now, don't start thinking that, well, three will be even better. It doesn't work that way. On to new things. The one on the left, the 59430027201, is the third of the most commonly recommended ferrite cores for in-fit half-wave antennas. Here I'm going to compare it with the 26431024402, which as you can see is a smaller diameter, but it's thicker, and the center hole is a whole lot smaller, so it actually weighs more, uh, even though it has a much smaller footprint. But uh, let's first let's take a look at the one on the left that is highly recommended by the experts in their spreadsheets and whatnot. 
So the red trace is one of those wound in a two-turn, 14-turn configuration. And as you can see, it's especially bad on the lower bands. Now the experts will tell you that, oh no, it has to be three turns, 21 turns. Well, that's the blue trace. And it's especially bad on the upper bands. So the experts are wrong again. Basically this piece of ferrite is a dumpster fire because neither configuration is what you want. And I know lately people are claiming that, oh no, I did four turns, 28 turns in this super special wiring where it overlaps back over itself and it's super efficient and you don't even need a capacitor and there is no way that four turns on the primary is going to be efficient. It's going to totally favor the bottom end, period. Okay, now, looking at the 26431020402, which is the red trace, and for comparison purposes, the blue trace is a 26431002, which is still the best transformer I've ever wound. Uh, you can see that this smaller transformer in... Uh, it's also in a two-turn, 14-turn configuration with a uh, 100 picofarad TDK capacitor. Uh, it's pretty close. In fact, it even beats it on 10 meters. So um, I would say that this makes a good uh, portable um, transformer, except for later on in this video, I'm going to show you something better. Now, this is actually about two different pieces of ferrite that are exactly the same size and weight but um, they are made of a different uh, mix uh, for ferrite products it's the third and fourth digit that tells you what mix it is so you can see that one is a 43 mix and one is a 61 mix but why would you do that, you idiot? The Facebook experts have told you, you can't use 61 mix. Didn't you hear them? They know what they're talking about, right? Wrong! And once again, the blue trace is 26432510002, the best transformer I've ever wound. And the red tra trace is now the 26431020002 two turns 14 turns and it did like a 120 picofarad capacitor just slightly more than a 100 and as you can see it's a little better down low than the the previous transformer but it's not quite as good at the top not very much difference either way you not enough for you to even notice a difference um, either one of them would uh, make a fine portable transformer but I'm about to show you something better and once again the blue reference trace is the 261325 1002 the red trace is now the 2661-102-002. Now look at that. Look at how much better that is. Now no, it's not down at uh, 160 or at 80. 
but uh, we're talking about small transformer here. We're talking about portable operations. How many people really do 80 meters portable? They're probably using a 40 to 10 meter antenna, maybe even a 20 to 10. So uh, this thing is so good, I think I'm going to zoom in closer. All right, now that's zoomed way in. And look at that. What a, what a difference. Uh, I should have mentioned this is a two-turn, 14-turn wind. And it did like a 120 picofarad capacitor best. I did try it. Three-turn, 21-turn. If you do that, you're going to kill the top end. But, you know, look at it in comparison to what's the best... 8010 transformer I've made in the past down on 40 and 30 meters it's only got like one third of the loss only about 0.15 dB per transformer and then tapers up until it's about the same 10 meters but uh, this thing should be really good for a 40 meter to 10 meter wire but we always have to wonder well what's it going to look like with an actual wire on it, right? Well, let's find out. Well, I'd say it looks fantastic. I don't have any complaints about this at all. I wonder why the experts don't ever show you anything like this. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know, it... Those groups are kind of like listening to this guy. They are not near Baghdad. Don't believe them. They are nowhere. This is silly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something. Hope you did. Uh, for those of you who don't like my humor and want to make comments about... Uh, you don't like my videos, whatever. Save your breath. I don't care. Nobody's forcing you to watch. Um, and for everybody, you should treat this just like I'm one of the experts. You shouldn't believe anything that I have to say here. What you should do is get your own test equipment, do your own testing, get your own results, and then you'll know what's going on. This is the way.